Hi team, today we're going to look at how to set up the Oxylog 3000 Plus as a non-invasive ventilator. The Oxylog 3000 Plus is a solid, reliable transport ventilator and can be used for both invasive and non-invasive ventilation. However, you need to set it up appropriately to make sure that it's safe for use with the patient. So what is non-invasive ventilation? Non-invasive ventilation, sometimes called mask ventilation, involves the direct delivery of oxygen to the lungs via the use of positive pressure without the need for an endotracheal tube. The benefits of this style of ventilation is that you don't need to intubate the patient, which carries inherent risks. However, it doesn't allow for as great a control of ventilation and oxygenation as invasive ventilation does. For non-invasive ventilation on the Oxylog 3000 Plus, you'll need an appropriate sized non-vented mask for the patient. This is a Fisher & Paykel brand mask, but there's lots of different brands. A non-vented mask is a mask that's designed to work with a single limb breathing circuit, like the one that the Oxylog 3000 uses, as opposed to the double limb circuit that some ICU ventilators have. They'll generally have blue connectors on them. Some brands even come with sizing tools to ensure that you get the correct fit. Regardless of the brand, you need to make sure that the mask fits over the patient's nose and mouth and doesn't leave any significant gaps where gas can escape which makes the ventilation less effective. Before starting, have the machine set up, plumbed to oxygen and plugged into wall power and also perform a device check. For how to do these, you can watch the tutorial videos that I previously made, which I'll link at the end of this video. Once your device is ready to go, the first step is to turn on the Oxylog by pressing the power button. It will run some quick self checks and then if everything is okay, we'll bring up the following screen. You'll need to select the type of hose or circuit that you'll be using. Today I was using a reusable adult hose, so that's what I selected. The machine defaults into VC SIMV mode, which will not work for non-invasive ventilation. To change the mode, we need to press the button marked SPN CPAP and confirm the change by pressing the rotary knob. If done correctly, the setting will change in the top left corner as well as the green light on the button. Next, we have to set the Oxylog to function in NIV mode. Start by pressing the settings button once to get to page 2 of 3 of settings. There you'll see a setting that says NIV, which starts as off. Select it with the rotary knob, change it to on, and confirm by pressing down. If everything's working correctly, you'll see the title change in the top left corner to show SPN CPAP slash PS slash NIV. The next part of setting up NIV for the Oxylog is setting the pressures that will be used to deliver oxygen to the patient. You need to go back to setting page 1 of 3, so press the setting button two more times. In this next section, we're going to be talking about changing the positive pressure settings on the device. I won't be discussing what these values are, or what they mean in relation to the patient, as that's a much deeper topic for another video. These values should always be set according to local policies at your facility, and under the guidance of clinicians experienced in critical care. We'll start with PEEP, or Positive End Expiratory Pressure. The default PEEP is 5 millibars, which is a good starting point, so just leave that for now. If you do need to change it, select it with the rotary knob, change the number, and then confirm by pressing the knob down. After this, we're going to be changing our PSUP, which is pressure support. This is how much extra pressure the patient will be given on inspiration, above the PEEP level that we've set. Generally, starting it at 5 is fine, but you might need to titrate it according to the patient. To change it, select it per normal with the rotary knob, change it to your desired level, and then press down to confirm. The next setting that you need to look at is the HME setting. A HME is a heat and moisture exchanger, and if you're using one for your patient, then you need to turn this setting on, as it changes the pressures and the volumes needed to ventilate the patient properly. To change this, we need to go to page 3 of 3 of the settings, then select the HME setting, and change it to yes or no, depending on what you're using. Don't forget to confirm by pressing the rotary knob down. The last step in the process of setting up the Oxylog 3000 Plus for NIV is to attach the mask. The first thing you'll need to do is detach the test lung. The blowing air sound you'll hear is normal. Now connect the mask to the circuit at the blue connector. If you're using a HME, then it should go between the patient and the circuit. This circuit also has a cuvette for measuring end tidal CO2 on it. Where possible, you should always use end tidal CO2 monitoring when using any kind of ventilation, whether that's invasive or non-invasive. The end tidal CO2 should go after the HME in the circuit. And that's it. You can now put the mask onto the patient and help their ventilation and oxygenation. Don't forget to check for leaks after you've put it on. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. Don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. And if you want to see some other videos using the Oxylog 3000 Plus, you can click on the videos here.